thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas season and a relaxing New Year's Day. We were over the mountain for New Year's with the family and we had a great time. We saw all the elk, they would come right up to the house. I think they would have sat down at the picnic table if the chairs would have been out. But it's nice to get back into the valley. The mountains tend to mess up my sinuses. So here we are. I've been so excited to present this video to you. Uh, this is the lesson on when is the day of the Lord? When does it start? How long does it last? And there's a lot of opinions on that. Some people think that the day of the Lord lasts the entire Daniel's 70th week. Many think that it's the entire second half of Daniel's 70th week called the Great Tribulation. Some people think it's one literal day. And you know, there are a lot of verses and passages that suggest any one of those options could be true. And it would be the accurate interpretation. But the fact that we can't all be right means this is in riddle form and we need to dig a little bit deeper. And so we're going to study this lesson out together and try and figure this out together. And so in order to do that, we need to review God's basic structure for the seven year tribulation because God has a purpose for the end time events. God has a purpose for Daniel's 70th week. And so starting out in order to solve this riddle of when does the day of the Lord begin and how long does it last, we want to review that all the end time prophecies are based on the three main things the Father wants. He wants to secure three main things before Jesus will set up his millennial reign on earth. And those three things that the Father wants, and he's going to get them in order, the first thing he wants is a bride for his son who will be Jesus' skilled helpmate. That's why Eve was created. So this is what the Father is going to secure for Jesus. Hence, the pre-trib upward rapture of the bride. She is going to join the Trinity in her glorified eternal body that's like her groom's body so that she can work as one with him to secure the remaining two things that the Father wants because Jesus' desire is to fulfill his Father's will. So the second thing that the Father wants is a righteous church government in the heavenlies that will replace the wicked Ephesians 6 crowd that is currently operating from the heavenlies. We don't see them, but we certainly feel the effects of them, and they constitute rulers, powers, and principalities. Hence, the mid-trib upward rapture of the church, which is the Revelation 12:5 man-child, who are also called the children of the bride chamber in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And that's what they're referred to in the King James Version. The church is Christ's body, and Jesus is the head of the government. So the two witnesses, the 144,000 Jews, as they are grafted back into the church, wake up the sleepy left behind church, they are going to become a very skilled government and they will be made ready to replace those rulers, powers, and principalities in the heavenly places so that God will have his righteous government in the heavenly places. Now, the third thing the Father wants to secure before Christ's millennial reign is set up on earth is a righteous earthly government who will replace the current wicked earthly rulers and politicians because God wants the heavenly government operating with the earthly government. They need to be righteous. Otherwise, the same chaos is going to ensue during Christ's millennial reign. So those are the three main things that the Father wants and what he is going to secure, and that is the purpose for Daniel's 70th week. Now, that righteous earthly government, that 
that is the remnant, the gleanings, and they get a sideways rapture to the barn because their, their flesh needs to be protected because God is going to have all those wicked rulers come down to earth. He's going to have the wicked spirits come up from the earth and there's going to be wicked human beings and he is going to wipe them out. So that is why the remnant needs to be snatched raptured, so to speak, sideways into the barn so they can be protected and provided for. So now you know why we see in scriptures three raptures. And what the church has done for centuries is lumped all of those rapture sounding passages into one event. And we need to see in the scriptures that it is an agricultural book, that the Bible talks about three harvests of a crop, the first fruits harvest, which is the bride, the main harvest, which is the church, and the gleanings, which are the remnant. And once we get this understanding under our belt, all the other prophecies build upon this truth. So now in order to understand when the day of the Lord begins and how long it lasts, the next step we needed to do was get out our concordance and look up every passage that has the phrase, a day of, in them. Because that's going to help us know God's purpose and what's going to happen on the day of the Lord. So that would be the next step. And when I do a topical study, I like to use the New American Standard Bible. The reason is when they translate a Hebrew or Greek word, that version is more consistent throughout the Bible of how they translate that word. So it makes it very easy to link passages together. And then once we know the purpose for the day of the Lord, then we'll know what scriptures to look for that tell us exactly when the day of the Lord begins and how long it lasts. So one of the things we're going to notice as we're jumping through these hoops together is that the passages that have a day of in them, we see that it's a great day for many people, for the righteous, but a horrible day for the wicked. And all throughout Daniel's 70th week, there will be saints on the earth because there will always be people coming into belief. There will always be people that the beast system turns on and they recognize, oh my gosh, I picked the wrong God, I picked the wrong government. Oh my goodness, all these people, when they were speaking the Bible to me, I know that they were speaking the truth. So that, that's one of the purposes for awful things happening on the earth. But there will always be Christians being made. And it's just that the church age ends at mid-trib when the church is raptured up to God, given glorified bodies, when the church is resurrected that same time, so it's a resurrection rapture, they all get glorified bodies, they kick out the red dragon and the two-thirds of the angels that remain, and they're going to be kicked out of heaven and thrown down to earth. Michael and his angels, they don't have the authority to throw the red dragon and his wicked angels down to earth. Only the church has that authority because God gave humans, mankind, flesh, the authority over the earth. So they have the authority when they are up in the heavenly realm and they have heavenly bodies, they have the authority to throw down the red dragon to earth because this is going to affect the earth in a huge way. And that's why that second half of Daniel's 70th week is called the Great Tribulation. It's because of all these wicked entities that are now on the surface of the earth. So I hope that makes sense to you. So the day of the Lord is going to be a great time for the righteous, but a terrible time for the wicked. In fact, they will never have experienced such a horrible time as the day of the Lord. So moving on, let's look at some of the verses together that provide helpful clues so that we can solve the riddle of when the day of the Lord begins and how long it lasts. Let's take a look at 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 3, which incidentally is like Isaiah 37, verse 3. 
Here's how it reads. This day is a day of distress, rebuke, and rejection. For the children have come to birth, and there is no strength to deliver. Okay, stop right there. We just got a huge clue that the day of the Lord begins after the mid-trib rapture. Because we know at that mid-trib rapture at Revelation 12, 5, the woman gives birth to the man-child. That man-child is raptured up to God's throne as the rod of iron, because that is the church. Um, that Those people are the children of the bride chamber. Anybody who misses the mid-trib rapture, they're not going to get born again into the heavenlies. They're not delivered at that point. So those who are not raptured at that mid-trib rapture in Revelation 12, 5, we notice that the woman runs deeper into the wilderness, but she is provided for. Okay, moving on. Psalm 42, 10. How blessed is he who considers the helpless. The Lord will deliver him in a day of trouble. So again, for this person, this is a good day. He has humbled himself. He is considering the helpless, and he might be helpless himself, this person. So this is what God wants. He wants a humble person who is recognizing who is being persecuted and who is being victimized. So people will be making these determinations. So only a humble person recognizes who is helpless and whether they are helpless. Okay, Isaiah 2, 12. For the Lord of hosts will have a day of reckoning against everyone who is proud and lofty and against everyone who is lifted up that he may be abased. So you see, this person is the opposite of the verse we just read in Psalm 42.10. This person is going to have a terrible day because he is very proud and he is going to be abased. He's going to be taken out. He's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be destroyed. Okay, look at Isaiah 22.5. For the Lord God of hosts... Okay, so now we need, we notice the hosts are going to be involved in this. So, for the Lord God of hosts has a day of panic, subjugation, and confusion in the valley of vision, a breaking down of walls, and a crying to the mountain. Okay, we've learned on this channel that mountains are governments. So, these people are having such a horrible day that they are hoping in and praying to the beast government. They are going to be in confusion. They are panicking, and they are going to be subjugated. Okay, look at Isaiah 49, 8. Thus says the Lord, In a favorable time I have answered you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you, and I will keep you, and I will give you for a covenant of the people to restore the land, to make them inherit the desolate heritages." All right, we learn a lot about the day of the Lord in this passage. So it's, for this person, it's a good day. They are being helped. They are being shown favorable. It's a favorable time for them. And what we notice is they're going to be a covenant for the people. Why? To restore the land. So think about this. After this um, Daniel 70th week, the land is going to be completely destroyed because the beast system, he is going to have so many um, war materials and arsenal at his fingertip and, and AI and uh, security. And he's going to have so many technological tools at his hands that he's going to completely destroy the world in his attempts to destroy flesh. So all of this is going to have to be restored. So I love this for this group of people which we now know is in the, they're in the second half of Daniel's 70th week called the Great Tribulation. We notice that one of the reasons why they're going to be helped and preserved, they're going to be used later. They're going to have, going to have a great ministry. Look at Jeremiah 12, 3. But you know me, O Lord. You see me. 
and you examine my heart's attitude towards you. Drag them off like sheep for the slaughter and set them apart for a day of carnage. Okay, this person is obviously being protected. They have seen now who the persecutor is, who the violent people are, and who is being persecuted because they're being persecuted themselves, but they are in prayer. They've now gained some discernment. They now know that only God is their savior. Only God's government is their savior. So they're praying out for them and they're saying, examine my heart. I've been humbled through this experience. I missed the pre-trib rapture of the bride. I missed the mid-trib rapture of the church. And here I am. I am the gleaning harvest. I am the remnant. And now I'm humbled. So now examine my heart. And now that I see who the wicked ones are, hey, drag them off for the slaughter, not me. Okay, let's look at Jeremiah 17, 18. Let those who persecute me be put to shame, but as for me, let me not be put to shame. Let them be dismayed, but let me not be dismayed. Bring on them a day of disaster and crush them with twofold destruction. Okay, so a twofold penalty is mentioned in the scriptures. So look at this person. He is in prayer. He is the remnant. He is the gleanings harvest. The gleaning harvests, well, what happens when fruit falls off a tree? The gleanings, they get bruised and scuffed up. So they're feeling very humbled now. And they are, again, like the verse we read previously, they're in prayer. And they're praying for a certain outcome for the wicked. Look at Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 3. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. So now it's not only going to be limited to just Israel, but for all the Gentile nations where there are wicked people in every nation and there are righteous people in every nation. Joel 2, 2, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the dawn is spread over the mountains, so there is a great and mighty people. There has never been anything like it, nor will there be again after it to the years of many generations. Okay, so Jesus said this is what it would be like during the great tribulation, that there's never been a time like this. So you see, we have really confirmed that the day of the Lord is not the entire seven years of Daniel's 70th week. We see that and we've received this confirmation. It is reserved for a period in the second half of Daniel's 70th week called the Great Tribulation. And there's never been anything like it, nor will there be again after it, to the years of many generations. Okay, what is this cluing us into? Well, we know that during the millennial reign of Christ, it's going to be rather peaceful. Uh, it'll be a thousand years of Sabbath of, of rebuilding and restoring and teaching the people who are being born about their Messiah, about their King Jesus, that they will always be taught that he is the Lamb and they will always be told what their Lamb went through in order to be their Savior, their Redeemer. But there will be people born during the millennial reign that did not live through the seven-year tribulation. They will need to be taught salvation and redemption. They'll be, need to be taught the gospel. And we also know from scripture that at the end of the thousand-year reign, Satan is going to be let out again. And so we know that some of these prophecies are going to happen again because prophecy is cyclical. Let's look at Zephaniah 1, 15 and 16. A day of wrath is that day. A day of trouble and distress. A day of destruction and desolation. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and the high 
corner towers. So there is going to be a trumpet and a battle cry against the wicked, the proud, the lofty, those who are being held in high esteem by the beast system. So we get a huge description of God's purpose and what's going to happen on the day of the Lord. And so now you can see why many people think it is one literal day. Let's now look at a day of atonement, the day of atonement. So read with me Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to read verses 27, 28, 29, 30, and 32. Here's what God says. On exactly the 10th day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you, and you shall humble your souls and present an offering by fire to the Lord. Verse 28, you shall not do any work on this same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement on your behalf before the Lord your God. Verse 29, if there is any person who will not humble himself on this same day, he shall be cut off from his people. Verse 30, as for any person who does any work on this same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. Verse 32, it is to be a Sabbath of complete rest to you, and you shall humble your souls on the ninth of the month at evening, from evening until evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. So from evening on the ninth to the evening on the 10th, you shall keep the Sabbath. So here we see it is two calendar days, but one day long. All right, so now we know the day of the Lord is not just one calendar day. All right, now we are going to, now that we've learned the purpose for the day of the Lord, we know that it's not just one calendar day. We know that it is now during the second half of Daniel's 70th week. It's not the entire seven years. Now we kind of know what verses to look for to see how long does it really last. Well, we get some great clues in Isaiah. Isaiah 34, 8. For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of of recompense for the cause of Zion. So now we're learning the day lasts a year. It's a day of vengeance. And we can clearly see that from the previous verses we read. And it's a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. It's to validate them, it's to um, get vengeance on their behalf because they have been persecuted so terribly. So here's the remnant, the gleanings who are being preserved, provided for, and so it's a great day for them because they're going to be getting justice for all of the injustice that has been done to them. They've been humbled. They've recognized their error. They've been humbled. We see that they've been calling out to God. They're praying in the way they should be praying. They are rid of their spirit of pride. And now God is going to take vengeance on their behalf. And it's going to take a year to do it. And now we have another witness, another verse, Isaiah 63, 4. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and my year of redemption has come. So it's a year of redeeming people. So this will include Jews and Gentiles. Oh my goodness, I just love this. This is so exciting. I love that we are getting these mysteries and this riddle solved. Okay, let's take a look at Zechariah 14, 3. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. All right, so it's going to take a year and he is going to go forth and fight against the, even the Gentile nations. So this is going to be happening globally, not just to Israel, although it includes Israel. Okay, Jeremiah 46.10. For that day belongs to the Lord God of hosts. All right, so we see the hosts being brought in once again. 
a day of vengeance. So as to avenge himself on his foes, and the sword will devour and be satiated and drink its fill of their blood, for there will be a slaughter for the Lord God of hosts in the land of the north by the river Euphrates. The glorified, raptured church, they are part of the Lord's hosts at this time. Once they're resurrected, raptured up, they have their eternal body, glorified body. They will have an angelic-like body. We learn that from Luke chapter 20, verse 36. They'll be like angels. They will be able to traverse heaven and earth in hidden form. They'll be able to bring provisions, but they are going to be also in their military garments, and they are going to be fighting for the Lord God of hosts during the day of the Lord. Because the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he's not coming back until the end of the seven years. It is the church that is going to be fighting on his behalf, just like David's mighty men. So remember, you read in the scriptures, there were times when David would remain back at the palace and he would send his mighty warriors out to fight battles on his behalf. He would, they would win battles in the name of David. He, David would get the credit for them, but it was, it was David's armies that fought these battles. So too, Jesus is going to remain in heaven and send the church, the militarized government, out to fight these battles, just like David's mighty men. Now, think about this. King David did not send his bride, his wives, out to battle. They remained with David in the palace estate. So only the armies went out. And you, if you will remember, Revelation 12, 5, the man-child that is raptured up, they are spoken of as the rod of iron. That was one of the things promised to the overcomers in the seven letters of Revelation that are written to the left behind church. They're promised that if they overcome, they will be the rod of iron. So once they're raptured, they indeed are the rod of iron and the rod of iron is coming down on the wicked during that year called the day of the Lord. Because the feet of King Jesus are not going to touch this earth until his second advent, when he comes back with all of his hosts to destroy the remaining wicked ones that his father is going to give him the honor of destroying them himself. So there's going to be a certain group that are reserved for Jesus and he is going to destroy them. Now, let's take all of these clues into consideration all these passages we have read we now know the purpose for the day of the lord we see what is going to happen on the day of the lord we know that it is now in the second half of the tribulation the period called the great tribulation so we propose to you that it begins on the sixth year of daniel's 70th week on the day of atonement and it lasts for an entire year and ends on the Day of Atonement of the seventh year. So we suggest to you that there comes a point towards the end of that year that God calls back the entire church from fighting this war, calls them all back up to heaven, and then there's a period of 30 minutes Jesus comes out of his chamber, suits up, putting on his conquering king garment. And we've made a video on his garments in the past. And then they all get ready to come back to earth with Christ, Jesus and his heavenly hosts, to do that final cleanup. And the Father is going to allow Jesus the honor of saving the worst guys for Jesus himself to destroy with the blast of his breath. Perhaps you see it this way as well after taking all of these verses in consideration and doing more in-depth study on your own.
it's been fun going through this study with you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've hoped that you've received some new revelation and you can go a lot deeper in your study on this subject because there certainly is a lot more to learn. But for those of you young mothers, I know that you don't have opportunity often to go deeper in your study. So I just want to make sure for all of you nursing yous, you sweet moms who have your hands full, that you get enough of these lessons that if you don't get to go deeper, that you're learning the scriptures right along with us. But for those of you who want to learn some more. Uh, I feel that Wayne Fowler did a great teaching on the day of Christ in one of his videos a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to put the link to his video in our description box after I get this video uploaded. And you know, when Wayne opens up the scriptures, he really does do a great job, a thorough job. So I think it might help you if you want to subscribe to his channel. It's called um, We Are the Overcomers. And he talks about the three harvests. He understands the purpose of the three harvests, the first fruits harvest, the main harvest, and the gleanings harvest called the remnant. So I think you'll enjoy his videos. Okay, thank you for sticking with me to the very end of this video. It really does help our analytics when you watch the video and when you subscribe and when you give us a thumbs up. And we love hearing your comments. That also helps our channel. But also, if you feel that the day of the Lord is something different, if you've studied it out and you have seen something different, please put that in the comment section and make sure you give us the passages that substantiate why your opinion is different than our opinion, our interpretation. That helps us all a lot because perhaps we've missed something, so we would like to hear your interpretation. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye! Thank you.